It's been alive for quite a while in the past decade or so. You realize that we're getting busier by the day. We're getting very many activities. And on top of those very many activities, we're getting very many distractions, shiny objects and, you know, very many distractions on a daily basis. Even as you're sleeping, you're being distracted. And even as you wake up the very first thing, you mean you are being distracted. And so there are very many things that we can be able to do unless we be intentional enough to decide to have our own time so that we can minister to ourselves, so that we can rest and we can recuperate, that thing is not going to come. If you're not going to be intentional about being productive and resting and having me time for yourself, it's not going to come. So in the episode today, I want us to look at one of the ways through which busy people can get me time for themselves and they can churn out, they can check out very many distractions out of their schedules so that they can have some time to catch up with themselves, rest, recuperate, recharge. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. See, if you're not careful, you find yourself steeped into very many activities of the day. And time goes. And before you know it, it's 55 years down the line you've been doing that job or you've been doing that particular activity. And when you raise your head up, time has left. And you look around and you ask yourself, okay, fine. I've spent 65 years or 55 years, whatever. These five or four decades that I've been working, quote unquote, working, Have I been productive? One of the most sinister things you see, and I know it's being used a lot by motivational speakers, is that the guys who normally retire, they are given a clock. You've been working for an organization for 55 years. I mean, you've been working for whatever amount of years, and they send you home with a clock, a watch, a wall clock, whatever it is. What does that signify? Whatever. The question that you need to ask yourself when that happens is that, have I been productive at the end of the day? I've been reading a book that says that every time people retire and they are not actively engaged in any purposeful enterprise, something that they look forward to when they wake up in the morning to do, guess what? They die. They die earlier or they get demented earlier than expected. My point is simply this, that it is easy for us to be distracted by a rut, R-U-T. It is easy for us to get steeped into doing, 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 and doing. And I think the greatest heartbreak is that most people have been dulled by incessant daily activity and have been tied up and lost in the mountain of backlogs. And so you wake up in the morning, all you want to do is to clear backlogs. Stop all the traffic. Ask yourself, am I being productive here? Am I being productive here? And I want to talk about that at the end of the day. Am I being productive here? Because it's a trap. It's a trap. 
If you're not being productive, let me tell you this. If you're not being productive, it is easy, it is possible that you might be churning out activity after activity after activity, but it is not necessarily being productive. He is being reactionary. Maybe you would disorganize or whatever it is. You're just doing stuff. Or maybe you want to make it in life. Or maybe you want the end result is to, can I make a quick back here? But we're talking about productivity in that you're doing that which you are intended to do. And when you find yourself doing that which you're intended to do, at times also, we find ourselves so passionately involved that we don't even create time for ourselves. And yet, we are the most critical element in the equation of productivity. So the question we're answering today is this. Yes, you're being productive, but your calendar is filled up with activity after activity after activity. What do you do to create some me time, to recharge, to be alone, to recuperate, just to be outside of the work? You know, I'm one of those guys who is, uh, you can call me a workaholic. And sometimes I feel guilty to rest. Sometimes I feel like you, you guy, <laughs> You just sit there doing nothing. What's the problem with you? Do you know you could be writing right now? You know you could be doing a book. You could be doing an episode. You could be working, my friend. You could be creating that online course. You could be finishing it up. What are you doing here doing nothing? And sometimes I find myself, you know, it's, I need to re- change to, ch- to rewire my view of rest. And I told you in the previous episodes that rest is a power thing. Just as powerful as work, they complement one another. Because when you're resting, you're getting more powerful. So today, this is what I envision you doing in order to create, to carve out some me time. Out of all this flurry of activities that are legitimate and also the distractions of this life and, and so on and so forth. What do you do? How do you become smart enough to carve out some time for yourself so that you can rest and recuperate? I think, number one, you need to differentiate between the urgent and the important. This is so, so basic, but so extremely powerful. There is a quadrant that people normally draw. I've forgotten the whole thing, but there is urgent on one end, there is important on the other I've forgotten the other two things on that particular quadrant. Maybe I'll remember later on and I'll come back and tell you. But just the fact that you can differentiate between the urgent and the important could give you a lot of time. You know, there are some things that are screaming in our ears, screaming, you know, for our attention. They are urgent. And for the most part, you could find, if you carefully check, you could find that the urgent things are not necessarily things that deal with productivity. They are not necessarily productive. Maybe they're not necessarily supposed to be done there and then. And yet there are those things that are important and you might think that they are not necessarily urgent. Okay, for example saving money when you get a windfall or maybe just income comes from one of your income streams it comes to you what happens is it urgent for you to save money at that moment in time or is it important or is it both for the most part the urge to save unless you've just restructured your brain for the most part it doesn't for the most part you're going to think that this is not urgent all right it is important and the problem is people don't do what is not urgent in other words it's not urgent so let me leave it so you leave it and you relegate it to the future like we talked about in some moments ago or in the episode yesterday you relegate it to the future because it's not urgent and yet it is important And you're supposed to do it today and so you don't do it. And you end up doing this cycle of things that you're just doing the urgent, the urgent, the urgent and the important things are not being done. Fast forward 
few years later on, you are in need for a financial breakthrough like Christians normally say. Is that an urgent thing or is it an important thing? All of a sudden, it is falling into the urgent. You look around, the important thing that you had you were supposed to have done was to save the money. But the money is not there. Now the urgency is there. You get my point. So we can go round and round in circles doing only the urgent and forgetting to do the important, which is actually feeding into our productivity. If we stop to analyze our daily activities, we will be shocked that we are spending so much time on things that are not necessarily up to us to do them. Even if that was so, we spend so much time doing things that do not have to be done now at the expense of things that must be done. Things that we should do. So the urgent things are those that scream at us and as if the world is coming to an end. But it isn't. It's kind of like when a team of paramedics get into an accident scene, they know what the serious the seriously injured guys look like. They are not the ones who are screaming. They are the ones who do not even have the voice or the power to scream and to cry. They are lying there motionless. So they kind of attend to those. Those are akin to the important things. They don't scream at you. Saving doesn't scream at you to save. And many other things that we're supposed to do. You know, exercise, it doesn't scream at you. Hey, let's go and exercise. Let's go and exercise. No, it doesn't. But eating pizza, you guy eating an extra sausage, an extra chapati, it screams at you. So for the most part, people tune off the important things, such as reviewing your life, daily reading, preparation, physical exercises, communication with family, random acts of kindness. Such things, they seem so trivial and yet they... They're the ones that we shall really care about when we're going near the grave. The excuse today is that if you focus on the urgent, you produce fruit that will be fodder for the important. Huh? And you see people doing things so that they can quote unquote make it in life and quote unquote get a, a back, a quick back here. And they have left the important things to be done. Let me tell you, you could have as well not have done that urgent thing. And therefore, that is where you get some time for you, me time, intimate time with yourself. Instead of doing the urgent thing, get some time for yourself. Because the important thing is the most important thing to do. So don't just fill up your calendar with urgency, urgency, urgency. I know urgency is one of the biggest values that I do have in life. But don't just be responding to the urgent things in life at all times. We're talking about how do you create some time for yourself as a busy person. Look at your activities. If it is urgent, probably it is not important. So instead of doing it, live it and use that moment to rest, to recover, to recuperate so that you can do the important things at the end of the day. And maybe even when it comes to prioritizing, prioritize the important over the urgent and you find that for some reason you've created some chunks of time in the day, in the week and even in the month to do your own resting and recuperation. There's a book written by Brian Tracy. It's called Eat That Frog, which means do the important things first. Then the other things will take care of of themselves. So that's one of the ways, one of the smart ways that you can be able to create some me time for yourself. If it's urgent, probably it is not important and it's not necessarily productive. So instead of doing it, use that time to rest. Use that time to recover. Use that time to recuperate so that you can do 
the important later on tomorrow we'll look at another until then bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.